Well, hello everybody. Thanks, Donna. I just saw, see the chat message there. I saw that come through earlier. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Yeah, I thought I would uh, start with some non-corporate uh, webinar music filler. You know, I had the keyboard in the office here. It's like, uh, let me actually uh, you put it to good use. So hopefully uh, not too many people uh, muted during that. <clears throat> but uh, no, totally fine if it's not your thing either. Glad everybody could join. Um, thank you everybody for coming. Just had a couple of cool announcements that I wanted to share. Um, today's was about syncing the unsinkable, as you know. This is about data that we've recently started syncing for schools that before it looked like it wouldn't be possible to sync. So hopefully I'm coming through okay. If anybody has any trouble hearing me, I can see the chat messages there. And um, so let's get started with it. All right, so first and foremost, like I said, welcome to everyone. Um, and I wanted to uh, put in one note about the privacy of the chats here. This is a little bit different from a, a, like a Zoom webinar where nobody can see each other's chats, you know, since this is on YouTube. But uh, what I have done is disabled chat replay for this, meaning anything you put in the chat is not going to be public when this recorded video goes live. So you can feel free to, you know, drop in things that are not totally um, public but uh, they will be visible to the other attendees. Thanks, Andrew, for confirming loud and clear. That's good to know. So uh, yeah, and um, feel free to interrupt me at any time with questions, and I will do my best to notice what's happening in the chat, even though I think there's a delay on YouTube of like five to 10 seconds. So hopefully that doesn't cause us too much trouble. All right, so a little bit about me to get started and about the user bus. Um, some of you know us already, but just for anybody who doesn't, um, I am the founder of UserBus. I started this, well, I got into this, I would say, about 14 years ago. I was the IT director at a Michigan high school while I was finishing my college degree, which is a whole story in itself how that happened. But uh, I noticed that there were a lot of manual tasks that I had to do there that there weren't good integrations for yet. And, you know, this is, the landscape has gotten better with more syncs and apps coming out since then. But I started writing some for them. And this is how UserBus came about. So in 2014, I was talking to the school. I said, look, can I make some of these more public? I want to share these with other schools. They said, yes, that's fine. You know, take it and do what you want with it. So I released the first integration publicly that I had done, which was um, an integration between RenWeb, now it's called Facts, and Active Directory. So in 2018, I started working with BlackBot. I've worked with a bunch of BlackBot schools since. And um, yeah, that's... I, as for where I live, I live in Michigan with my wife and our Beagle Pointer, also known as a Boingle. And uh, this is my wife and our Beagle Pointer, Skeeter. So there you have some lovely uh, photographs so you know who we are. And um, about the company itself, like I said, this is probably a 10 year endeavor or so now, but basically just moves data for schools. And we started with FACS and now mainly focus on Blackboard, but still serve some FACS schools. And we work with dozens of schools across the US. So, okay, now to get to the heart of what this webinar is about, unsinkable Blackboard data. This is stuff that you just couldn't sync before as a Blackboard school to other places, or it was very tricky to do so. So, you know, for a little bit of background about what that means, you know, when you sync to other apps, we consider BlackBot here your system of record. This is where you have all your students, all your data is the most up to date. This is, for a lot of schools, they want this to be the source of truth that their other apps reflect, right? So with BlackBot, we can say, let's sync to, you know, third party apps, like um, here's some examples, Vanco, Rank One. And some, many schools will sync to a sync hub, like um, Clever or like UserBus also does this type of thing, where the sync hub will then sync to other third party apps. So you've got a few layers here. Now, usually when you sync this type of data, you're syncing things like students, teachers, classes, enrollments, and pretty much anywhere you sync can pull these, and they usually do it through one roster when they're talking to BlackBot, and some have direct integrations with BlackBot too. Um, but what we find is with one roster, there are certain types of data that you can't sync, and it gets hard with other types of syncs as well. So there's, for example, non-teaching staff. If you're a BlackBot school, you just can't add them to one roster at this point. One roster only does teachers, parents, and students. And uh, the same with athletic groups. There's check boxes for if you want to sync activity groups from BlackBot to somewhere else, but not athletic groups. And the same goes for community groups. 
And uh, community groups is even more complicated because you can pull them through advanced lists. So, you know, some schools might want to do a CSV export. Here's all our community groups. But the, then the problem is you can't pull community group leaders. So you might want to sync community groups to another platform and know who's the owner of this group, owners, but you can't do it. Until now, that's what we'll come to. But um, some more examples. Custom fields. Uh, one of the schools we work with stores a special department title in a custom field, and they can't sync that. Again, not doesn't go through one roster, and some of these things are hard to get out of, out of Blackboard. Phone numbers as well. Uh, if you look at some of these communication platforms like Remind, Parent Square, they don't have a good way to get phone numbers from Blackboard. And so what they've done, if you look at their documentation, like Remind, for example, and we'll look at Remind more in detail for those who aren't familiar with Remind, but uh, Remind actually requires you to, well, they recommend putting up posters around your school for having like a special Remind Day where everybody can uh, text a special phone number to set up their phones in Remind. And this is all because they don't have a good way to pull phone numbers from Blackboard. Well, they didn't. That's again, <laughs> we'll talk more about that. But uh, so, yeah, here's the problem. This is how other, black, other platforms extract data from Blackboard when they're doing these syncs. Like we said, they focus on one roster, which is missing all this data. So here we have Blackboard again, our system of record. Blackboard basically has these four ways that you can pull data from it. There's one roster, like we've talked about. There's Sky API. There's advanced lists, which you can export to CSV files. And then there's web scraping, uh, which would be actually having a robot visit pages on my school app and pull data from them. Uh, so most of the platforms, they're focusing over here on the left, and they're just pulling from one roster, and that's why they're missing all this data, and the list goes on and on, because everybody wants to pull from one roster. Nobody wants to integrate with every individual uh, student information system. They don't want to write a custom Blackbot integration. They just want to pull from one roster. It's the one-size-fits-all, nice and easy way to do it. So, um, so far, so good. But what happens is with this missing data, schools have to now augment it. So what, I've, what we've seen is that a lot of schools, schools are doing things like this. The school will pull from Sky API themselves, which is which is a hassle. You know, you have to set up a developer account and all the rest. Advanced, they'll pull from advanced lists, and they they will. Um, so they'll take, uh, you know, they'll write the, they'll create the advanced list, and then they'll do an export to CSV files. And uh, this is, um, again, a hassle for the school to maintain, but also to have to combine it then and ship it off to some place like Clever or whatever. Uh, like with the Clever example here, one roster covers part of it, and the school is like, well, I need non-teaching staff in Clever. I might want athletic groups there, too. So then they're, they're writing these, their own CSVs that then get shipped off. But of course, then you run into problems like, okay, now the school is maintaining these scripts for this. You might have to log, did it actually work, and alert somebody if not. How are you going to schedule this to run daily? You know, are you going to run it in Windows Task Scheduler on a server? What happens if that server's down? Fault tolerance, what happens if that server can't reach the destination or Blackboard? Because that that happens. <laughs> we see it happen. There's a 500 gateway error. So, and uh, also to maintain all this, because you're going to have to, you know, deal with the formats of the different systems and all the rest. So it's a, it's a hassle for Blackboard schools. Um, we So we've tried to solve this for school. So here's how we here's how we approach it. Um, go back to this again to see we use all data sources that are available from Blackboard. So here's Blackboard, here's our four data sources that we talked about. User bus takes from each one of the four. And then what it does is combines them and ships off the data to your destination. So what you're missing from one roster, we can pull from Sky API. What's missing from that from advanced lists? What's missing from that from web scraping? So we've we've uh, we've kind of cracked the code of pulling everything together. Now it's uh, you know it's it it's messy, but we handle all the mess for you, so you have a nice clean solution there. All right, so um, let's look at a case study. So uh, Hebron Christian Academy, we have this beautiful picture of, of the outside of Hebron in, in Georgia here. They came to us wanting to sync to Remind. So this is where we'll talk again about Remind that we mentioned. Remind, to dig into that for those who haven't used it, um, I think many of you are using platforms like this. It's a, it's a phone-based messaging app. And the idea of this is, um, you know, there are many parent squares, another one. 
Um, the idea is they are the intermediary. They handle messaging between parents, between teachers, between students. So um, right in this screenshot here that I pulled from their website, you've got, we've got a fifth grade science class You know, in the screenshot here. And uh, fifth grade science is it has all these this list of students and it has the teacher and it has the, the students parents are associated with it and so what you can do uh, with this is the teacher can then say I need to send a message to all the parents so they you know they pick up their phone they open the remind app and they message all the parents in their fifth grade science class and the parents receive messages the parents don't have to have their mind app um, it handles all this for them so this is an alternative to you know every day at the first day of class teacher goes around writing down all the students names and numbers and all their parents names and numbers and trying to manage those lists themselves which is um, you know not only a big hassle and hard to update over the time but it's also not the best for privacy you know if somebody maintaining all these lists of names and numbers so anyway, um, that is that is what Remind does. Uh, first of all, so let me let me pause for real quick because I've just been like uh, rattling things off. Any any questions so far? And like I say, there's a delay, so I might not answer right away if you if you type in a question, but I will be watching the chat if anything comes up. Okay, so in the meantime, I'll uh, go ahead with the next slide here. So uh, the problem is to get data into Remind. They recommend one of these ways. You can do it manually. Again, that doesn't really solve our problem. That's kind of similar to the rest of it if you just maintain your own list. But you, you can also, um, well, so I'll, I'll mark here this time consuming, right? That's one of the main issues. You can also prepare your own CSV files as a school and upload them to Remind. But again, you have, that's a big time consuming thing. And also the format of the files, again, you're going to have to customize that for Remind. And there's going to be missing data. If you just pull this from advanced lists, like we said earlier, you can't get everything from advanced lists even, or from a one roster export. So you're going to be combining these things. One roster, again, missing data. Sync API is another option they have, but it's not for Blackbot schools. So Blackbot schools can't use it. It's only for ARIES uh, student information system. And then there's ClassLink. Um, but again, ClassLink pulls through one, you know, ClassLink and Clever are pulling through one roster and they're going to be missing certain specific Blackbot data. This is, so uh, none, none of these options is really good for a school to do directly to sync to Remind. Okay, so and Hebron came to us and they said, here's what we need in Remind. These are some of the things that, that we called out as, as looking for Remind sync. Academic classes, okay, that's pretty much a given. Activity groups athletic groups, and community groups. Now, um, the first, the top row here is easily is easy. You can do that through one roster. You, there's a checkbox in your one roster config in Blackboard that you can export activity groups, and then academic classes are, are by default. But the bottom two get more complicated. So athletic groups, you cannot do through one roster. Um, you can do through the Sky API. Okay, so we got Sky API here. Then community groups, again, this is where it gets extra complicated, where you can do through advanced lists, but you can't get everything through advanced lists, so you also have to do some web scraping. So uh, this was this was complicated, but that's where it's fun, is making something like this easy for the school, and, and uh, that's what we did. We ended up building a bot. Uh, unfortunately, the bot doesn't look as cool as this. It's just a piece of software. But the bot is a, um, like I say, a piece of software that opens Google Chrome and logs into Blackboard's My School app, just like a user would. And this is to work. This is to work around the limitation that Blackboard doesn't have any other way of, of us to export community group owners or leaders. So the bot will go to the community group's web page. It's logged into you know Hebron's uh, My School app, and it reads the group leaders from there, and then it tells user bus, "Here are the group." leaders. And so this is our way of pulling those through uh, through any means necessary, really. So this is, um, you know, we ended up putting this out in our web portal, where um, our web portal basically lists the syncs that, that a school has. And this is, you know, one of the line items here. If you were to click on this, you can see that they could run it on demand or uh, run a test run. And you can also set up a schedule where, where it runs repeatedly and then go to view the, the log of what it's done. So this was out there running, or is out there running, I should say, and it is successfully 
sending all of these things nice and cleanly to remind and this goes for you know any any sync destination basically but as a result you know now a, a coach at Hebron can easily say hey parents uh, parent just a reminder and that message will go to all the parents through a mind so just kind of a cool way to use um, kind of a technology technological innovation to uh, sync data that really Blackboard has not made easy to sync and this is something I, I talked to them about and they said yes it's not on the roadmap right now to be able to to do that so um, so yeah that's that's one option but you might be asking at this point is that the only you know unsinkable data we've listed a few at the beginning and the answer is no it's not just confined to those uh, even in the slide earlier that we went over because using that approach we can sync any any data so you know if it's on a page in Blackboard we could sync it we could pull it uh, typically we'd want to start and see okay is it in one roster is it in Sky API and we would do that for you we would do that analysis and see where can we get the data from but um, this lets us look and see hey we can you know no matter where it is we'll ultimately be able to get it we would start with those options but we would end up anywhere else all right so uh, how can you take advantage of this well a few different ways uh, first of all you could use one of our pre-built sinks like I say we have a bunch of sinks that uh, already have specific destinations and they're set up and ready to go and you can customize them because every school's needs are a little different um, and we'll look at some of the destinations you can sync to right out of the box in just a moment but um, beyond that you can also you know have us enhance existing one roster integrations some schools may say hey I've already got a one roster integration to app ABC and I'd like you just to add some data to that and say okay we can replace that with our one roster blackbot export which can augment it with all that special data and finally you can contact us and we can build a, a totally custom sync um, we've done that with with a variety of different systems so uh, some pre-built syncs if you wanted to look at that we we sync to a number of different systems um, some of the newer ones are jump cloud uh, we're doing um, and then we sync to Apple school manager you know to clever to all these other ones up here and to any SFTP destination we can really just customize whatever fields they need there all right so then uh, that's you know some of our pre-built ones but to also if we if you wanted to go the route of one roster you have let's say an existing export and it goes to whatever app we can come in the middle there and replace Blackboard's one roster export with our one roster export which can add any data that you're missing this is an easy way to swap one for the other and you keep the really the same setup it's, it's just a you know swapping one part for another basically okay and then finally if you wanted you know we you can also custom contact us for a custom sync and how we've done this is, is fixed price quotes for schools and uh, various syncs that we've developed and different types of data extracts and reports also. So this is basically um, you know, kind of an overview of the different ways that it works. And that brings us to the end here. Any questions? Anybody have any questions so far? We have uh, just a few minutes left. And if so, I can go over anything. And of course, you know, feel free. I think everybody on this has my email contact information, and uh, you can always contact me through that, or you can schedule a meeting. Um, my Calendly link is in the signature of that. So, I'll give just a couple minutes here, and I'll also, you know, I'll also check in. I will, and I'll say, I'll say this. Uh, you know, any email that I send you from that from that personal account is actually from me. I'm actually uh, there. You know, typing it <laughs> to say because uh, some of these, uh, I'm always curious when something comes through and it's like, you know, is this the way it is? And yes, it is. Awesome, good to hear. Thanks, thanks, Jeffrey. That's good. And okay, Donna, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. It's it seems there's always like these little gaps with some of these sinks, and uh, happy to look at that. So yeah, I, I appreciate everybody coming. Um, last few seconds here for more questions. Otherwise, I'll just uh, let everybody go early here. 
Um, here, let me put up my contact info. Like I say, I think everybody has it, but there's my also my cell on the screen. If anybody wants to contact me, you can reach out and just call me, and um, that is straight to my cell. So anytime I am available. And uh, yeah, I think that wraps it up. I appreciate everybody joining. And like I say, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Happy to start conversations. And hopefully we can get some of this cleaned up. And tomorrow we're having another webinar, which is a, a really cool innovation around being able to plug this in to, um, to a, an integration platform. So to be able to, to uh, trigger something to happen when things change in Blackboard, like let's say a new candidate comes in and you want something to happen, maybe you have to wait a certain number of days before it happens, maybe you have to send a form to somebody for them to review before it happens, but you can schedule these types of uh, automations to happen thanks to this innovation that we'll be talking about more tomorrow. So that's a, that's a really cool one too, I think. Um, I think that'll let schools I know some schools are using like Power Automate and some and Zapier and uh, Make.com, some of these other automation platforms. But there hasn't been a good way to plug in Blackboard yet, and that's what, that's what we're working on. Blackboard has kind of a power automation integration, but it's very bare bones. It doesn't let you do a lot of uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the things you'd expect from an application. So we'll look at that more tomorrow and. Yep, yep, definitely welcome for sharing this. And Andrew, yeah, absolutely, Cal calendar data. Yes, that is something that can go through also. And so, um, yeah, feel free to reach out. We'll have more conversations, and I will follow up uh, later. But I appreciate everybody coming out, and I guess we'll end uh, six minutes early here if there's nothing else. So I appreciate it, everybody, and I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thanks so much.